Well, if you have your Bibles with you today, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Matthew, chapter 7. I have received many, many questions over the years about a lot of things, you know, regarding the Lord and spiritual things and, and success and all kinds of stuff. Uh, one of the more common questions that come is when people are struggling what to do with what to do when the results they're expecting are not forthcoming. I prayed this, I made this declaration, I made this commitment, and it doesn't seem to be working. And uh, the fact that it's not uncommon might give you some comfort. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there are, I mean, the good news is there are answers to these things. And so what was on my heart to minister was a series addressing that. And I've called it help. It's not working. Okay. If you've ever felt like that, then you are in the right place at the right time. And so let me begin with this. Understand that the phrase not working can never be applied to God, nor can it be applied to his word, all right? We might use that on our end of the equation, but never with the Lord because it's just not in his DNA, his vocabulary, God's, who God is, he doesn't fail. And every word that comes out of his mouth, remember Isaiah 55, he said, will not return void, but accomplish the thing for which it was sent. And so there is no failure on the part of the Lord. And, and when I was analyzing uh, this subject and thinking about scriptures, I'm thinking about Jesus because he taught best, it seems, and most exhaustively on faith. And I thought, well, where's that teaching from the Lord on when prayer doesn't work. And of course, if you'll track with me, you don't know of that passage either, do you? <laughs> In other words, Jesus didn't teach, say this, do this, pray this, believe this, so forth. But if it doesn't work, then do this. You recognize he didn't say that. How many know if he would have? If there was a chapter in the Bible of what to do when it's not working, then it kind of teaches that sometimes it doesn't work. And Jesus never taught that. He didn't teach what to do when it doesn't work because it seems from his vantage point, it always works. He taught prayer and faith and, and these type of things in, a, in such a manner where he used absolute language. He was very dogmatic. You do this, this will happen. You ask, you believe, you do this, this, this is what's going to be the result. So you might ask, well, if he didn't teach it, what are we doing teaching it? <laughs> I've asked that same question myself. Should I even be talking about this? But I can, I mean, it's something that is, has been experienced by people. And, but it's almost like we have to reverse engineer what he said. Because he didn't make... Uh, you know, space and give margin for the word of God not working because it doesn't not work. So if, some, if someone's experience is that of it didn't work or it didn't take place, then I have to go back and kind of reverse engineer the things that he taught and the, how he taught prayer and, and speaking and all these things and say, okay, what are we doing that, that is not in line with what he said to do? Because what we do is we say, I did that and it didn't work which when we analyze closely, there's something in the I did that that we're missing. And it's a, it's a good discussion to have because we can go back and, 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 and see what the Lord actually said. And so, what, again, what Jesus said is these things seem to be a matter-of-fact experience. So whatever I come out of this with, I want to have that mentality. If I do what the Lord said, it works, Period. Okay, now let's look at Matthew 7. This is a good starting point, even though uh, it's a well, well-known passage of Scripture. If you'll look at it in your own Bible or on your phone, uh, you need to know where it is. Matthew 7, verse 7. 
Jesus said here, ask and it will be given to you. Now, is there any room for error in there? Any room for question or concession? No, ask and it, it will be. You mean just period, like will be? Yep. It will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you for everyone. Did it really say that? Everyone who asks, what do they do? Receives. Receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. So, So this is the word of the Lord, and this is the mentality I must adapt and that is this. So let's say it out loud together. Uh, say, or say it after me. Say every time, every time I, ask, I ask, it is given to me. It is given to me. When, I seek, when I seek, I find. I find. When, I knock, when I knock, doors open. Doors open. Yeah, it works for everyone. It works for everyone. Say, say it. It works for everyone. It works for everyone. And it works for me. It works for me. Yeah, yeah. How often does it work for you? Now, now someone might be quick right there to revert to, well, this one time. No, I encourage you, don't do that. Right. You got to stay on the same page with me until, you, until the light comes on. When the light comes on, everything works. Come on. Right. Yeah. It, it totally works. So stay with me and don't let any, any excuse say, yeah, but what about, yeah, but what about. Okay, we're going to stay on strictly the words of the Lord and say, that's true. And everyone, that would, that would be me. Okay, so I see how this works. When I ask, I get it. Amen. Works for me. I, I, I'm a hundred percenter. Yeah. Come on. yeah. So we're not praying to see if it works. We're praying to see that it works. I can't wait to pray so I can see that it works when I pray. So the starting point then of all this is to know that God is faithful and faithfulness to in and faith in his word works 100% of the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. Say, well, I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. He or, or a girl, she uh, believed and she stood in faith and it didn't work. Now watch, hold on now. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. You right. don't know anyone like that. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Now why? The reason I'm not going to accept that statement or, or agree with you is because I have a choice. I'm either going to believe that, I'm either going to believe you, or I'm going to believe Jesus. Don't be offended. I'm going with Jesus. I like you. I like him more. Okay. Not, not just about like, I believe his word is true. And so I'm not going to take a situation that I don't fully know. Maybe no way for me to fully understand everything that's involved in someone's lack of victory or success. I can't know that fully. So I'm not going to elevate someone's experience or lack thereof and put that over the word of God and say, well, sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does work. What verse is that? Yeah. Jesus did not teach it. Therefore, I don't embrace it. I don't accept that. Amen. Everybody with me? I say that I don't accept it, not as a rejection of you or your seeking of answers and, and reasons, no, but a rejection of that thought that Jesus was lying. Praise the Lord. Okay, now here's what Romans 3 says. Romans 3, 27, put that up. It, it reads, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. Okay, so what he's talking about here is our justification, um, our right standing with God, forgiveness of sins, acceptance with the Lord does not come as a result of working or the law of works. It won't produce eternal life. It won't produce the new birth, the law of works. But he said, well, what does? The law of faith does. Faith in what Jesus did for us 100% of the time produces that desired result. I'm accepted in the beloved, all right? Made righteous by the work of Jesus. Not only is that true concerning salvation, but everything in redemption works that way, okay? Every promise of God in Christ then works by that law of faith. 
And if it's a law, it's not subjective. Okay? The law of gravity, if we talk about the physical realm, the law of gravity doesn't work for some people, for nice people, and mean people just float away. You know? Or old people are young or spiritual or non-spiritual, whatever. Any qualification, gravity we know just works. Spiritual laws are that way. They just exist. God is not even really making them happen. He set it up. He created all this, but then it just works in perpetuity, okay? It's like when your body is functioning, you just breathe, right? And in the laws of the Spirit, including the law of faith, it just works. It works for anyone who will work it, and it works 100% of the time, okay? Now, this is the foundation for getting the results that we desire. If we, if we don't settle this issue in our hearts, there will always be doubt as to whether God is holding back our answer. All right. And many are taught that this didn't happen. Well, there's some reason. There's some mysterious reason. God in his infinite wisdom is somehow withholding this, but you're saying he's suspending gravity this time for me. No, the law of faith works every time. Now, say, well, what about the will of God? Okay, excellent question. The will of God is revealed in the word of God. The way that I know God's will is to see what he said. All right, as opposed to, I don't discover the will of God by looking at circumstances. I don't discover the will of God by praying and seeing if anything happens. We never discover the will of God out here. We discover the, word of, the will of God in here. If someone said, well, I think this means that we, we should just pray and then we'll find out. If God does it, that was his will. If God doesn't do it, then it wasn't his will. Okay, think about that. Not only is that, that, that not a verse, but secondly, uh, that's called walking by sight. Not by faith, but by sight. By what we, that is expressly the opposite of what we're taught to do in Scripture. So if I'm praying to see if, mm -mm, I've violated the law of faith. But if I'm praying to see that, now I'm operating in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so, so to, this, to this rule, to this law, there are no exceptions. Zero exceptions. Let me say it, even bring it home. You are not the exception. You are not the exception to the rule that governs our, our action or our, the results that we get from faith and prayer and so forth. You are not the exception. Why do I say that? I'm saying even if you believe this is a 99% chance of working, it won't work for you if you believe that because you're gonna be the 1%. And if you were the devil, what would you tell you? <laughs> Say, yeah, you hit the jackpot. You're the 1% right there. <laughs> You're the one that's not going to work for you. Oh, you are the exception. But I'm telling you, there are no exceptions. Jesus didn't qualify his statements and say most of the time. He didn't qualify these statements and say, if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G, K, G, J, K, <laughs> L, M, N, O, P. Uh, he didn't qualify these things. And so here's, here's another statement then. I want you to uh, at least consider that no one has acted in faith without results. No one ever has. Zero people have acted in faith without results. Now, they might have said they did. It might have looked like they did. But I'm not going to blame God for something that didn't apparently come to pass uh, in my life, I'm going to analyze whether I did my components and not blame God, because that's an easy escape. I was speaking to a guy years ago, and he, he was a, a good man, a Christian, and I forget if we were talking about healing or something like that, and, and, and he's, he was basically saying, well, you guys, meaning me and people like, like me, will always just say that it's someone's, if something doesn't happen, then there was a problem with their faith. And I said, one, no, we don't always say that. 
That's what you heard that we always say. Secondly, what you always say is if something doesn't happen, it just wasn't the will of God. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and I was right and he was wrong. <laughs> but I'm saying the will, of God is reve- the will of God is revealed in the word of God. So if I don't know the will of God, I should find the will of God, but I should not look, look at circumstances. I should look at what he said. Because his promise is true. I'm not going to let circumstances override the integrity of who God is, making him a liar. So there's something out here that doesn't align with his word, but he is faithful to his word. And if we think otherwise, we are doomed to failure. So Jesus used absolutes in talking about faith and prayer and and other matters. He used absolute language. Therefore, I need to adopt that same way of speaking, all right? Not making absolute statements where I have no knowledge, not just randomly spouting off and just claiming things and just making statements that have no foundation. No, but, I, but when I do know, when I am sure, when I know I've got, I'm in the right position, then I speak with absolutes because Jesus did. Amen. All right, everybody ready for number one? All right. <laughs> Don't be concerned about time because this is a series. Number one, here's what we're going to do. Here's what I recommend you do if something is, quote, not working. Number one, check your foundation. Check your foundation. Think about if you're buying a house or buying a a commercial building, one of the most important things you want to analyze is the foundation. Because if you go up to that that house and you see there are cracks everywhere, you know this could be an expensive purchase after I purchase, right? There could be some big problems. If the foundation is solid and secure and, and, and you know, at what it needs to be, then you can build on top. Then you're not gonna have the troubles that you would have if you didn't have, uh, if you had a bound, bad foundation. And so here's another way to say that then. If we say something's not working, Okay, then obviously we're expecting something to work, something to change or some provision to come into our life. My question is this, on what basis are you expecting God to do something for you? Why do you think he's going to do that for you? If someone answers with this type of answer, like, well, I really need it or I really want it, Well, how many know God doesn't respond to needs? I don't know if you realize that, but look around the world, you'll see very quickly, there are a lot of needs going unmet. And God, who is the most loving and the richest, (laughs) the most capable, able, he, he desires more than anyone for everyone's needs to be met, yet they're not being met. God doesn't respond to needs. Jesus didn't say, If you have a need, God will automatically fill that void. That's not a promise. He did talk about asking. He did talk about seeking and knocking. He did say a bunch of other things that could result in that void being filled. But he didn't just say, if you need it, it'll come. It'll happen. And so, no, uh, on what basis do you expect God to do something for you? Now, very familiar passage. If you don't know it, I encourage you to start knowing it is Romans 10 and verse 17, which speaks about faith. And it reads this way. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how am I gonna have faith for something? I have to know what God said about that something. I have to know what his will is about that thing before I can have faith for that thing. If I don't know, I'm guessing. If I'm guessing, there's tons of room for doubt. There's all kinds of room for error. If I don't know the will of God, I'm just throwing up a prayer. I'm playing the lottery. I'm just hoping there'll be a chance that somehow things will work out, okay? But if I know the will of God, I'm no longer dealing with uncertainties. Now I'm dealing with something firm, something solid, something I can take to the bank. And that is the integrity of God's word. So when you think about faith, don't think, 
I need to kind of psych myself out or hype myself up. I'm just going to believe. And I'm just gonna, not going to doubt. I'm not going not gonna to question, not going to be afraid. And it's all kind of emotional or mental. I'm going to work myself into this thing called faith. And that's not what faith is. Faith is not about just working ourselves up. And it's more than being positive. Positivity is good, but it's more than just having a positive outlook on life. Faith, again, comes very specifically. It, it, is, it drops into us. It becomes a part of our being when we hear the word of God. In other words, another way I could say that, when God's ways, when his will, his power is made known to us, then we have the foundation to believe. If I don't know, I cannot believe. Faith never exists in the realm of an absence of knowledge. It can only exist when I know the will of God, I know what he wants to do, I hear the promise of God and know the way he is. Praise the Lord. Okay, now we understand this, I think. Do under, understand this? <laughs> uh, that having faith in God for something to change, something to happen, is different than having a general commitment to God and loving God or being a, you know, a Christian. See, you can have faith for the forgiveness of sins and have eternal life, but have zero knowledge about other promises that he has guaranteed you in this life. Sometimes people pass away. We say, I don't understand. They really love God. There's no question of, question of that. They may have really loved God, been committed to God. They may have served in the church, but you don't always know what level of revelation they had. And this is why, you guys, it is so important what we hear. It's so important what kind of church we're a part of. And I'm not implying by any means that we're the only ones that have good information. We are not. But it's so important that we hear things that reveal the will of God and the ways of God to us. You could come to church for years and you could learn about Noah and the ark and Daniel and the lion's den and learn about Jesus multiplying the fish and loaves. You can learn a lot of biblical stories and there's value in that. But if it's not tied to a redemptive experience in your life, you'll never walk in it. You can hear the stories and you can hear it from a surface level, but never get the spiritual engine that drives it. And without the revelation of, of those matters, it won't ever translate into an experience. It won't ever result in a healing or prayers that were being answered or joy that overcomes depression and sadness in life. It's got to translate into that or I don't see it yet. And if I don't see it, he sure wants me to see it, but I have to go after it. Jesus said, if you'll seek, you will find. Praise the Lord. Oh, God is good. He's helping us already. Amen. And so, uh, listen, faith is not trusting that God's will is automatically going to be done. All right? Okay? That's not a scripture. In, in order for that to be faith, you would have to have a scripture that said, and God's will will automatically be done. If there was a verse that said that, then I would sit back and go, cool, we're good to go. It's automatically good. It's not automatically going to be done. That's why we use faith to change things. That's why we believe God's word in order to alter circumstances. Sometimes people say, well, we just need to trust God's plan. Nope, nope. We need to trust God's word. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Say, what's the difference? Usually, when someone says, trust God's plan, what they mean is, look around and see what's happening and just accept and believe that whatever is happening is God's plan. And that, I tell you, is not how things work. There's a real devil that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. There are people that are in disobedience to God. There's all kinds of stuff happening that are not a part of God's plan. Therefore, I do not embrace what is happening as being God's plan. I, I discover God's plan by reading his word, by seeing his heart, his character, his nature, and his redemptive promises. And I say, that's the will of God. Oh, look at my life. It's not happening. We need to change that, don't we? Lord, this is your will. This is what my experience is. 
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that changes to match this. I'm not going to change this to match my experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this is the absoluteness. It's that mentality that, that, that we get to where we are basing everything on the revealed will of God. All right. Now, one of the, one of the ways we like to say this, I've said this many times, is I, I want to ask people, what verse are you using? What verse are you standing on? Okay, the Bible wasn't written in chapter and verse, but ours is now translated into chapter and verse. Makes it really easy for us to say, you know, this book, this chapter, this verse, this is what I'm coming to you with, Lord. This is what I'm basing my, my request on. This is what I'm basing my stand on, my stand of faith. You promised me in your word this, 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 and this. And therefore, I take you at it. But the, the problem is, too many times, even good-hearted people, they love the Lord, they're just praying. And you say, what verse are you using? Uh, uh, I've had this happen a few times. All of them. <laughs> the whole Bible. You cop out. <laughs> One, that is not true. You are not standing on the whole, you may be unless you're physically standing on it. You're not standing on, because one, you don't know the whole Bible. Even if you have read it all, I guarantee you've forgotten a lot of it. I have. I have to keep reading, keep going back. Someone says the whole Bible. That's too generic. It's too nonspecific. What revelation do you have of God's will for your situation? You say, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't have one. That's awesome. Now we know what to do. Now we know why it's not working. Now we know what the, your foundation is missing. You're missing the very starting point. Say, so, well, what verse should I use? Slow down. Ooh, slow down. Ooh. Uh, now it's time to look. It's time to seek. It's time to read. Okay? If you're about to die in five minutes, get some Christians around you to keep you alive. We'll speak life and cast out demons and we'll do whatever we need to do. But... For most people's problems, it's not that urgent. It's we need to dig and find the thing that's real, that's right, that's light. And when I find the promise to me and I know it's mine, I know it's God talking to me, now nothing can move me off that foundation. Praise the Lord. So when someone says, well, do you believe? Wrong question. What do you believe? Not do you believe, because everybody believes something. Question is, what do you believe? And if we're praying to the Lord or making a stand of faith, you know, speaking to our mountain, what promise, what verse, what are we using, what are we acting on that is solid and secure and it's got all of heaven backing it? Because Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So I'm gonna build my life on his word, not my experience, not the church I necessarily grew up in, not someone who I respected that may have taught me wrong unknowingly, okay? I need to have a scripture. I need to have a verse. Amen. And preferably more than one. Yes. But one will, do, one will do the job. Yeah. Say, well, I got to know the whole Bible, huh? No, you don't. It's not going to hurt, but no, you don't have to know the whole Bible. You need to know something that is God's revelation of his will and plan for your life. Yeah, man. And I like the verses that include everybody. Because yeah, then I know I'm in it. <laughs> when Paul was on the ship, uh, there, out, out there at sea, and it was bad. It's, he said in Acts 27, 25, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. You believe God what? You believe God what? I believe what he told me. Someone said, well, I don't know if the Lord has told me anything. Well, he 100% has. But the problem is not knowing it. And that's why we look. That's why we seek. That's why we read. That's why we have discussions with fellow believers and family and friends. And what do you know? We talk about the thing. So the revelation of God's word come, becomes light to us. It comes alive. When I know it, I see it. This is the will of God. Now I'm ready. But you see, sometimes when someone says, ah, it's not working. I did this. I did that. And it's not working. Okay. What's your foundation? What are you basing this on? And too often, it's an uncertain foundation or it's guessing or it's just a need or some of the things we've said. 
and it's not solid based in God's word. And that's the starting point. And right there we solve so many issues. Praise God. Now we're out of time for today. So that's part of number one. <laughs> and we'll, we'll pick up there next time. And uh, God is going to help us tremendously. Amen. Amen. Is he working in your life? Yes. Say it out loud. He's working. He's working. In my life. My life. Right now. Right now. Now, now pray this with me. Say, Father. Father. Open my eyes. Open to see, to see understand, understand, and know the truth. Know the truth. Jesus, said, Jesus said, when I would know the truth, know the truth it, would it would make me free. So open my eyes. So open my eyes. Give me a spirit of wisdom, me a spirit of wisdom and, revelation and revelation in the knowledge of you. Knowledge of you. I, pray in Jesus name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you.